Um, so yeah, so welcome guys to my session. Uh, so uh, just to, to give you a little bit of a high level of what the session is, uh, is this will kind of go through an example of a bug that you face and kind of go through the troubleshooting that you would do. And as, as Yarek said, emphasis on how to write a good issue report. So just a little bit about myself. I'm here from uh, Toronto. Uh, I've been working as a data engineer for over two years uh, and using Airflow for about the same amount of time. Uh, so most re more recently, I've been a little bit more involved in the community. Uh, so uh, yeah, that's a little bit about me. I'm from Bell Canada here in Toronto. So as we all know, Airflow is uh, a big project. It has a lot of components. It's a huge code base uh, that's stored in, Git in uh, sourced in uh, GitHub. Um, so we have a lot of issues. We have a lot of pull requests against the source code, uh, and you know, every every few weeks or so, we get a new uh, version, and it contains new features, bug releases, bug fixes. Um, so this is the source, uh, the source code of the Airflow uh, project. And a little bit about our community. Uh, we're a, a group of volunteer contributors mostly. Uh, so who, who pick what to contribute to and in what way and how often. A bunch of us probably have a variety of levels of, of commitment. Some of us do maybe a few hours each week. A lot of us do much more than that. So um, this will come a little bit relevant, more relevant later in the session when I go through how to how to reach out for help. So let's just keep this is us, our, our global community of contributors. So so yeah, so a lot of us are Airflow uh, users. We're mostly pretty happy with the product, uh, but like any other software tool, we have a lot of we have some bugs. Uh, so the goal of the session is to, to go through how to reach out for help and really recognize uh, your power as someone who encounters bugs. You know, it might be a little uh, frustrating at first because you're under time constraints. Maybe they're, they're a little annoying, but you really do have the power to make this product better uh, for everyone to use. Okay, so let's go through an example. Let's say you write a, a quality check pipeline. So uh, you have a customer's table and this is being used by your data scientists or your analysts and they, they wanna make sure that this condition holds. So you write a, a DAG um, uh, that uh, consists of the following tasks. So I think this is... Um, so your DAG consists of two tasks. First, we have a, a check over here that checks for nulls, and then we have a post error to Slack. So it's a classic check and notify uh, pipeline. Uh, so you can see uh, the code over here. So this is a Google Cloud provider operator, which is the BigQuery value check operator. So how you should really think about this uh, operator is that it checks that the execution of the SQL statement that you provide is returns a value that's exactly equal to the past value right here. So if it, if it is equal to that, uh, the task will succeed, otherwise it'll fail. So clearly you can see, you know, a bunch of you who are maybe kind of looking ahead, you can see that uh, the trigger rule for the second, the Slack post operator is failed. So if and only if this previous task fails, then I'm going to notify, you know, because our engineers would want to know about the, the quality um, shortcoming there. So, yeah, so, and this, uh, so these are the two control flows kind of you can have. If everything goes okay, this one's skipped. It, a, lot, a lot of you will notice that the pink uh, code, that's a skip status, and if it fails, hey, you know, you wanna not be notified. Um, so yeah, so let's suppose that uh, your, your analysts or your data scientists are freaking out because the data, you know, the customer ID, uh, there's some nulls in there. 
So I just want to quickly pull the audience. Maybe you can yell out uh, if you can think of questions you might ask or um, ways you would start your troubleshooting. If anyone wants to, has any ideas? So this one, this one's supposed to to check, and it's supposed to notify if it fails. And you're getting no Slack error. You're getting no Slack alerts. So what could be the reason of why you're not seeing that? Pardon? Yes, that's a that's a that's a because if you're executing the SQL statement, then it's not for some reason the database is not taking any any uh, uh, queries, query requests. That could be one reason. Anyone else? I know, yes. Well, that's a, perhaps a more catastrophic scenario than, the, than what you mentioned. Uh, I'll give you one. One is maybe there's a bug in your SQL, uh, SQL statement. Uh, so perhaps uh, you, know, you're, you think you're doing one thing, you think you're counting the number of nulls, but you're not really, or there's something wrong with that. So that can be one issue, right? Uh, another one could be, um, I don't know, maybe you're not reading the documentation for this operator correctly. Maybe. Um, you're, you've misunderstood what, what it's supposed to do. Um, but I'll narrow down the options for you. Uh, I look at my logs and I see that this check is uh, succeeding. And um, let's say there's nothing wrong with the SQL statement. So you really are counting the number of nulls and um, you verify that the number of nulls is in fact not zero. So, so that condition is... is, is uh, is true. So there's no nulls, um, and you verify that on your end. So you know, perhaps at this point you should start uh, suspecting a bug with the Airflow code itself, with the Airflow operator source code. And uh, so, so now you're you're at this point where you you've realized that you, the tool you 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 really love, um, you know, perhaps there's something not not working quite as as it should or as it, it's supposed to. So a good thing to start, and this is something that will lead you to a bug report, is to do something simple like, kind of force it to fail in a very obvious way to someone who has no context of what you're doing with the operator. So something simple like this, right? So select one, and then the pass value is zero. So clearly, that, that, that's a condition that evaluates to false. And lo and behold, we run that, and we get a success. So there's clearly something wrong with the uh, BigQuery value check operator. And this is something actually that was reported a month or so ago by, um, by a guy, I'll skip ahead, um, by Nathan Hatfield, who is really good for submitting that bug. And uh, Pankaj Koti, uh, who submitted a PR for that fix. So we can look at the, at the template a little bit in, in a second of what the issue template looks like. Um, but really, what you want to ask is, uh, can I submit a GitHub issue? And you can do so when you know you're seeing behavior that should not happen. So usually there's expected behavior and one that you're seeing, and they're clearly different. Um, and uh, so, so sometimes you have something that looks a little weird and a little funky, and you're like, I don't think it should behave this way, but it's not clear um, what someone can do to reproduce it. So if, if that's not the case, if you, if you can't get a, a, a set of steps to reproduce it, um, then that's not, I don't think it belongs to, to, to an issue report. So let's take a look real quick about um, on the, what this issue looks like. Okay, so this is what I was getting at. So you, can, you need to, to outline steps to reproduce um, this, this issue. So Nathan here chose to do something like select false, pass value equals true. Uh, so he said, um, okay, this this should fail. This should fail, but this test too, as you're seeing, it succeeds. Um, and uh, he was emphasizing that the fact that he used the deferrable set to true 
that that was the condition under which this this faulty behavior was was occurring so it was because of uh like only when the variable was actually true and you can see a bunch of logs uh this is invaluable right because you want to make sure people know uh what you're seeing so extensive log is always a good thing and um you can and then notes about what environment you know what Airflow version you're running, your deployment. Uh, so props to Nathan Hatfield for for um, for you know this example of a, of a good issue. Um, so a good question is uh, when you know I've submitted my issue and I've been so good to the community because I didn't just like try to find a, a, a workaround or or just kind of pretend it didn't happen, you know and um, just kind of go push push on. So, but what happens next? Uh, this issue will be picked, and when uh, someone in the community decides to pick it up, so that's why issue quality is very important, right? You want someone on the other side of the world who knows nothing about uh, what you're doing to find it easy to get to work on on troubleshooting with you and maybe altering the code base. So, and. Um, and a little bit of uh, maybe uh, just to keep in mind is that people are volunteers. So, um, and if if you if your if your issue is something that's affecting your production pipelines, and you're really pressed for time, and you think you know uh, maybe you should think about hiring paid consultants who will act in your behalf. Um, that that's for you to decide. And. Of course, if you if you if you're like I uh, if you don't know where to start, the community can always help you uh, get up and running and starting. If something's off and you're unsure if it's a bug, namely if you can uh, provide steps to reproduce it or prove that it's unexpected behavior, then um, this is something that we face at Bell Media. We had our scheduler die uh, just sporadically. And uh, we didn't know what was going on. And uh, so we looked at the logs. We found it tricky to, to know exactly what went wrong. It was a scheduler issue. Um, so, so in that case, when you know, you're confused and you're stumped, uh, a good uh, resource to use uh, is, is the GitHub discussion. So I suspect I found the bug, but unsure how to start debugging uh, or unsure how to reproduce. In fact, there's a lot of issues that get relabeled as discussions um, because they're, they don't qualify as, as, a, as an issue. So if you see a bug, you really do have potential to make impact to the project. Uh, so it's important to keep that in mind and you can reinforce the community as one of the best out there, where it's easy con to contribute to and members' time and effort you know, is, is taken into account and respected. And this is just a kind of, I'll, I'll include a guideline you can use to, to keep in mind all your resources. So, you know, when this presentation is up, maybe you can come back to this. You know, you can have discussion forums or the GitHub discussions. Uh, and if you're if you wanna if you see an issue that uh, outlines the same stuff you're dealing with, I'm also seeing this issue is not particularly helpful because that assumes that you're kind of saying, hey, I'm seeing the, I'm I'm experiencing the same issue, but but they might look similar on on a, on first glance, but uh, really upon more uh, up attention to your configuration differences or perhaps. Um, uh, how you're using uh, the tool, uh, it's a different uh, root cause of the issue. So it's really important that even if, when you say I'm also seeing this, you include the logs uh, and your environment configuration and any other relevant details. Yes, any questions you have about bugs or troubleshooting or anything? Thank you.